Hello, once again, happy Tuesday, everybody. Tuesday, February 23rd. Video number 274. <laughs> we're, just, we're just adding right on, on to it. I'm probably going to come even guess that I may be here for video 300. I don't know. So I'm waiting on money to come in so it'll help me move. So it'll help me put the plans together to be able to move with. And I'm just giving you that little thing. But today we got to, we're talking about creation part number two. Yesterday in creation part one we talked about creation and praise of God. Today we're going to be talking about creation and the constellations. So sit back and relax and let's get to it. Hope everyone had a great Monday yesterday and looking forward to having a great Tuesday today or had a great Tuesday if you're seeing this real late. Today we're going to be starting off with Job chapter 9 verses 8 and 9. It says, Which alone spreadeth out, out the heavens and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus, Arcturus, Orion, and Pilates, and the chambers of the south. I hope I pronounced that, that word right. A-R-C-T-U-R-U-S. Arcturus. It's talking about something in the something in the, the, star, the constellation name. I know Orion and I know the Pilates. 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 How do you pronounce that? I know those, but that's a new one for me. Arcturus. I, I guess it sounds all right. So here the book of Job is the oldest book in the Bible. Ooh. Cool. It is not surprising, therefore, that it contains a number of references to the creation and the flood. For these great events were still relatively flesh in the thinking of Job and his contemporaries. The first of these creation references of Job is our text, or the verse above. The verses above. And it is remarkably that it is, it is remarkable that it's centers especially on the stars and their constellations. So still yet another constellation is mentioned in Job 26 verse 13 which says, By his spirit he had garnished the heavens, his hand had formed the crooked serpent. Finally, canst thou bind the sweet influence of Pilates or loose the bands of Orion? Canst thou bring forth Maz Mazaroth in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Knowest thou the ordinance of the heaven? Canst thou set the dominion thereof in the earth? Job 38, 31-33 So the term Mazaroth actually means the twelve constellations of the zodiac. Ooh, that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good term name, Mazaroth. It's M-A-Z-Z-A-R-O-T-H, Mazaroth. And if I butchered it, I'm sorry. That's the, that's the clean, that's the straightest way I know how to pronounce it. It, sa it sounds right to me, so that's the way I'm going to say it. So thus God not only created the stars, but arranged them in star groupings, that could be used for signs and for seasons, as it says in Genesis 1.14. And since God does nothing without a holy purpose, we can be sure that these side side real signs, side real signs, Trevor, however you pronounce that word together, side and real, S-I-D-E-R-E-A-L, however you pronounce those two words together, I do, I'm not going to try to butcher it. I'm just going to say side real signs were not to be used as, as astrological signs. God's word, in fact, forbids the practice of astrology. You can read that in Isaiah 47, 12 through 14. So the constellations must all, in some ways, have testified the coming Savior. 2 Corinthians 4, 6 says, For God who have commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, have shined in our hearts 
to give the lights of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. <clears throat> yes, I am still wearing my Harvick shirt that you probably saw the other day. I've been wearing the same shirt for the last two or three days. <laughs> I've been wearing it, I'm basically wearing it all weekend, but I wore it Friday, I think, and I think it was Thursday, I don't think I had this one on Thursday, so, I've been wearing this shirt all weekend, but, I put it on after I got a bath on Friday, and took it off and put my night shirt on Friday night, and I put it back on yesterday, and I slept in it last night, oh, Saturday night into Sunday, so I still got it on now, but I'll probably take it off tonight and put my night shirt back on. <laughs> but okay. Second Corinthians four six For God who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness have shined into our hearts to get the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Sorry, I forgot I read it. So lastly, before the scriptures were given, the testimony of God's primeval Primeval promises have somehow been written indelibly in the heavens. But those in earth's early, earliest ages who had eyes and hearts to see. So the testimony of God's purposes had somehow been written, that's what it's saying, indelibly in the heavens. And it was for those who had eyes and the hearts to see. He had the eyes and the hearts to see. To see. Amen? So basically they were written there for people that could see it and had the heart to love it. It's what I'm what I'm what I could take from it. So in those early ages, if you had the eyes to see it and the heart to love it, then then you were good. Then you were able to read into what his promises were. <laughs> Now, now, do you get me on that one? If don't, then, then if you read some of these verses, maybe you will understand. So that's it for part two on creation. Creation and the constellations. Tomorrow we'll be talking about God's shadows. God's chateau, not shadows, shadow. One shadow. <laughs> talking about the shadow of God. and Maybe that would make it sound better, the shadow of God. It's always hard to say God's this, God's that. So. But tomorrow's Wednesday, February 24th, and it will be 275 for the video number. So, I'll be getting that in just a few minutes. You'll be seeing that tomorrow. So, I love you and I appreciate you. When that said, trust in God and keep safe. Pray for those who need prayer. And peace out. Until tomorrow, everybody. Goodbye, God bless, have a blessed Tuesday, and goodbye. Goodbye.